In April of last year, President Gadapaya Rajapaksa of Sri Lanka banned chemical fertilizers in that nation of 22 million people, motivated by environmental considerations. And there are some sobering lessons to be learned from what ensued. In particular, it took less than a year for that ill-considered action to crash the Sri Lankan economy, ultimately leading to starvation, riots, and a change of government. A recent foreign policy piece described that crisis in Sri Lanka as a farrago of magical thinking, technocratic hubris, ideological delusion, self-dealing, and sheer short-sightedness. We have glimmerings of that same sort of thing happening in Germany, in the UK, in California, and in Texas, where hasty and ill-conceived greening of the energy system has degraded reliability and increased costs in an ineffective effort to avoid vague and uncertain climate problems several generations hence. It would indeed be a crisis if that were to happen across the U.S. We should be very careful since precipitous emissions reductions are far more dangerous than climate change itself. We have time. Reducing emissions won't stop the climate from changing. It varies an awful lot on its own. In fact, rapidly reducing carbon dioxide emissions won't even reduce human influences on the climate anytime soon because, as Professor Dessler said, CO2 accumulates in the atmosphere and persists for a century or more. At this point, I would like to inject a personal note. My book, Unsettled, was published in April of 2021. One month later, Professor Dessler was one of a dozen co-authors of a Scientific American piece criticizing the book. I was not a co-author. You were? No, you, your name is right on the, I, I show you the picture from the scientific headline. I was not a co-author. Your name is right there, Andy. Uh -huh. can, can we show that slide, please? <laughs> Inexplicably, there it is, right there. And... Uh, I see your name right there, uh, right? Yeah, okay. Inexplicably, the criticisms were based upon a review of the book, not what I'd actually written. They criticized three points I was alleged to have made. For example, they said I put trade sea level rises steady over time. Well, the entirety of Unsettled Chapter 8, if you've read it, is devoted to variations over the past century. Since Scientific American refused to publish a detailed rebuttal, I posted one on my Medium page, and it's worth checking out. But the great bulk of the 1,000 words from those dozen distinguished scientists were devoted to ad hominem attacks. For example, I was called a crank who's taken seriously only by far-right disinformation peddlers hungry for anything they can use to score political points. Really, Andy? Do you think I'm a crank? Do you really believe that? Yeah, I think I. They it may is have quoted me. They may have quoted me. I was not part of writing well, why a piece is your name like on this. It? I think they probably quoted me, and these, these no, are the quotes I mean, they used. Not, you know, I am not. I was. Uh, trust do, me. Do you I was disavow not, what's in that article now? I, I would have to look. I have to look at. The, I don't even remember what they said, but I think uh, they did not. I have to say, I do not remember that, and I'm pretty sure they probably just quoted me. They probably no, sent me you're some not questions. quoted there. There's no quotation uh, in there. That you're no. just an author. Uh, I have to All say, right. if I'm an author, then I apologize for that. If Thank I'm, you. If I'm All an right. author. I don't All remember right. that. Okay. okay. We, right. It we, is unfortunately typical of public discussions of climate and energy. When senior academics engage in name calling, they debase themselves and deny the public any real expertise that they have. It's the kind of thing people do when the facts aren't on their side. I hope I've shown you tonight that the facts are on my side. In particular, the proposition is unjustified. The official science of the government and US, UN reports, as well as common sense, belie that we have a crisis or that catastrophe is imminent. We clearly have time to think through any large-scale changes in our energy systems. The proposition is also immoral. All who advocate for rapid decarbonization somehow fail to mention how to alleviate the world's energy poverty without fossil fuels. 
and the proposition exaggerates the climate threat which depresses young people. Finally, the proposition is a techno-economic fantasy. It would take the energy system rapidly in an unnatural direction. That would degrade the quality of energy services, as we've already seen in California, in Texas, the UK, and Germany. It would raise costs and would disrupt society even more than any climate change itself. Each of these three points, unjustified, immoral, and fantastical, would re warrant rejection of the proposal. Taken together, they warrant a resounding rejection. Thank you.